Lucid is picking a fight with Tesla because they just announced the Lucid Air Sapphire and it is a beast of a sedan. So what I'm going to do in this video is compare the Sapphire edition of the Lucid to the Tesla Model S Plaid and let you know which one I would buy. There is one big differentiator between these two that will definitely affect a decision which one you're going to buy between these two. So let's talk about some of the spec and tech before we jump into Photoshop and have a look at the design from the front, side, and rear, and also the interior. So the Tesla Model S Plaid comes with three motors making 1,020 horsepower. And that was already less than the Lucid Air Dream Edition performance, but the Sapphire takes that up a notch. The Sapphire also has three motors and the official power output is over 1200 horsepower. And this makes it the most powerful sedan in the world. The Plaid does zero to 60 miles per hour in an insane 2.3 seconds, not counting the rollout, but the extra punch of the additional 200 horsepower gets the Sapphire to the same speed in 2.1 seconds with reports of sub two second times on prepped surfaces. The Plaid is equipped with 15 inch inch steel brakes up front and 14.4 inch steel brakes in the rear while the Sapphire comes with carbon ceramic brakes as standard made by the same company that manufactured the brakes for the McLaren P1 and I think this is a really big important part of these two when you compare these two the brakes if you have over a thousand horsepower you maybe want to have some decent brakes to slow these heavy cars down and the Sapphire's brakes are also bigger than the Tesla's with 16.5 five inches in diameter in the front of 15.4 in the rear. Now Tesla says that you'll be able to upgrade the Plaid if you want to to carbon ceramics as an aftermarket option soon but it's going to be pricey and it's going to cost $20,000 for parts and the installation. So what about the range here? Well the Plaid has 348 miles of range on a single charge which is really good. However the Sapphire it hasn't been tested properly for the range but the Lucid Air Dream Edition has been reported to cover an unheard of 505 miles of range on a single charge. The Sapphire will most likely have the advantage in range of the Plaid and probably land around somewhere around 400 plus mile range, which is still really good. So what about the price? And this is the problem here if, we, if you're considering between these two because there's no getting around that the Plaid is by far the less expensive car between these two starting at $137,000. And I would definitely add the $4,500 21 inch wheel as an option and even and with the $20,000 ceramic brake installation, it still comes in at around $162,000. And comparing that to the Sapphire that starts at a quarter of a million dollars. So it's almost 90,000 more base price than a loaded Plaid. But that's enough about the spec and tech. Let's jump into what really matters here. Let's talk about this design. So let's have a look at the front view. We're going to have a look at the front side, rear, and the interior of these two cars. Here we have the Lucid Air Sapphire up top and the Plaid at the bottom. I think these both of these are really good, not just because as EVs, I think they're overall just very good looking cars. And I think even though they're very sleek, as you can see, the Lucid here doesn't really have any sharp angles in in the design very fluid and i think that's the whole point with the lucid air to have it be almost like a bean shape almost like some melted surfaces around here but it still works i still think they get a clear identity in their design and that's hard to do as a company that just came out and doesn't have any design history to le lean back on very narrow headlights as you can see right here which is a trend right now i like this design i think it looks good i rather have the headlights up here than in the bumper like we have another trend these days it's just a simple clean design the tesla model s has been around for a while now came out in 2012 with some minor upgrades to the graphics for example now we have leds in the front end but we do have some sharper lines in the body both in the front as you can see with this no tesla nose here for example and also this chamfer that we have in the lower part of the car but it creates a nice clean identity for tesla as well it's a very safe design i think tesla is playing it super safe with their designs that's a conscious 
conscious decision because they want to have their models live for a very long time because they don't really have the uh, capabilities of spitting out new models every five years yet. So looking at the side view here, this is where I think Tesla has the advantage because I like the way the front end stretches out further here than it does on the uh, Lucid. The Lucid looks more like a typical EV shape with a very bean shaped design while the Tesla has a proper greenhouse and also a proper hood. It looks like it could fit a V8 under there. We have the space for an internal combustion engine and that's reflected in the design as well. Very much soft surfacing in the Lucid as you can see. Not a sharp shoulder line. Very organic and round and fluid design which also helps with the range obviously and that's I think a priority for the Lucid. We also have this two-tone upper half which I think uh, separates this from other EVs. And here we see these big ceramic brakes behind these beautiful wheels. These wheels by the way have the same kind of function as the Tesla. So you have they come with this uh, cover that you can put on here but if you take it off this is what it looks like. I would probably always have the covers off because I love these wheels. I think they look so much better than having the cover on even though I might lose maybe I don't know 15 20 miles of range. What the Lucid does well is it looks like an EV but it doesn't have this Mercedes EQS bean shape that I'm not a fan of. It still looks like it has some definition to it but not as much definition as the Tesla Model S. So from a side view I definitely prefer the design of the Tesla Model S because we have more of an internal combustion styling to this making the, the proportions and the boxes of this design more beautiful in my opinion. So let's have a look at the rear view and this is where the Tesla shines for the 2022 model. I'm going to show you the differences between the 2021 model and the 2022. Something happened there. A small detail in the graphics but it makes a whole lot of difference when it comes to upgrading and modernizing the design. Lucid Air has this massive wing in the rear, sort of like a trunk spoiler like we have on the Plaid here as well, but it's bigger on the Lucid. The diffuser look a little more aggressive, higher than it is on the Tesla down here. I love the stance of this car. I think it sits beautifully on the ground. I don't, I'm not sure if this sits lower than a regular Lucid Air, but it feels like the wheels sit very nicely inside the wheelhouses here, filling out the space and making it it look nice and planted. I think the Tesla does a similar job with the Plaid with these optional 4,500 wheels which to me would be essential as an upgrade for the Plaid. Same thing here, we have a lot more sharpness in the rear end of the Tesla than we have in the Lucid. The rear taillights of the Lucid have a very clear connection to the graphics in the front end and I think the rear end graphics connects well with the side and also the front making it a strong design DNA for a brand new company. I want to show you the rear of the Tesla here and what happened for 2022 model year. These taillights are the same taillights that they had in 2012 so they haven't been upgraded like they did in the front end. These are brand new headlights in, with the facelift but they didn't do anything in the rear and that annoyed me to, to the point where I would not buy a Tesla Model S simply because we have these LED dots in the taillights which isn't in line with the rest of the lineup. The Model X has now the proper LEDs, so does the Model Y and the Model 3. The only thing left was to upgrade this taillight of the Model S and that's exactly what they did for 2022 and just look at how much better and how much more modern this looks by having a proper solid LED inside of the taillight here and redesigning the structure of the of the LED, uh, taillight in the rear. The in internal parts of the LED now looks like it's actually a 2022 model and that's what you want when you're paying $150,000. Last but not least, let's have a look at the interior of these two beasts of EV. Up here we have the Lucid, down here we have the Tesla model uh, as plaid. What I like about the Lucid is it has a very simple layout and we also have a proper <laughs> steering wheel right here. The, the yoke for the Model S, I kind of wish that this was an option, that you could opt for a normal steering wheel like this. You can still have the flat bottom, but at the top, I usually like to keep my hand up here when I'm driving, and it would just feel more natural to have a solid connected circle up top. 
I like both of these interiors. We have this big screen in the center which can tilt out and go in and out. If you want to hide it, you can do that. We have the storage space in the middle just like we have on the Tesla as well. And we have this big panoramic glass roof going all the way above the rear passengers as well. Really cool design, simple design, but it's functional and it works. It's a very safe design of the interior, but I, I don't think it needs anything else than this. The screen here is a little stylized with the curvature up top and the radiuses, so it's not just a flat rectangular screen up here. Details that I like that they put some effort in designing. Looking at the Tesla Model S, we have a big screen in the center, very squarish, but it looks integrated, a lot better integrated than it does in the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3, for example. And then we have a nice house for the uh, gauge cluster here that we don't have in the plaid. So the interior, in this case, I'm gonna have to go with the Tesla Model S for this comparison of the interior. So which one of these would I buy? Well, if you want a Tesla Model S and the high performance, you get 1,020 horsepower, you get this charging network, which Tesla do a lot better than the competitors, for example, Electrify America, they don't have the same amount of chargers everywhere and they're not as reliable as Tesla chargers from my own experience. But at the same time, the Sapphire looks beautiful, specifically in this blue color and 1,200 horsepower and three motors. You get three motors in the, uh, in the Plaid as well. But I think it's just a, a little bit more exciting than the Tesla Model S because it's been around for so long for a decade now, and then the Sapphire comes in as a brand new performance EV, the most powerful sedan in the world. So my choice would be if I didn't consider the price, which is just kind of stupid to not do, but I would go with the Lucid, but since the Plaid is $90,000 less than the Lucid with the carbon ceramic brakes added to them and the 21 inches, if I were to actually buy one with my own money, I'm gonna have to go with the Tesla Model S Plaid.